Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eternal. Welcome back to my OpenGL series. So, today's gonna be a pretty cool and fun episode, I think. We're gonna be integrating something called I am GUI, I am GUI, I am GUI. People say it differently. I say I am GUI. But basically, what I am GUI is, is a GUI library kind of thing that we can use in OpenGL and DirectX and any kind of rendering API. It's pretty much API independent. It's a way for us to just draw UI on the screen. And by UI, I mean things like buttons, text fields, color pickers, just information, windows, stuff like that. It's really, really useful for debugging purposes and it's even useful if you want to make some kind of application quickly in kind of a real-time rendering setting. So like a graphics editor. Maybe like if we were making a game engine and we wanted to get a level editor up and running without having to actually make a Windows application using Qt or WPF or anything like that, you can even just make it using IAM GUI really quickly and it would just run like a game, run like a real-time application, which is really cool. So link to IAM GUI will be in, this, in the description below. The idea for today's episode is just to basically integrate it into our existing OpenGL code base. The reason we're doing this is because going forward, it's gonna be really, really useful for us to have a UI kind of that we can just spin up really quickly for kind of debugging purposes. So for A, it's gonna be really easy for me to just bring up values on the screen that we can see and edit and then see that how that affects our actual graphics, but also for kind of debugging. If we want graphs, if we want frame rate, if we want kind of buttons that we can click that trigger certain things, it's really easy to kind of uh, do all of that with, with a library like I'm GUI, and it saves us having to write our own UI library, which to be honest, <laughs> can take like really long time. So anyway, without further ado, let's just go in and take a look at what we've got. So if we kind of just run our code to see where we were at last time, you can see we had this channel logo and we had a model view projection matrix that we made consisting of a projection matrix, a view matrix and a model matrix. As always, all this code is available on GitHub if you're a patron. So check out patreon.com forward slash the channel if you're not and sign up to get all of this code individually per episode. That's where we're gonna be starting from, the kind of model view projection episode. Uh, all that code is going to be the basis for this entire episode. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is get I am GUI. So if you check out the link in the, in the description or just Google I am GUI, I'm sure you'll find it. If, if we go to the releases page here, I'm just going to download the source code for version 1.6. It was released 12 days ago at the time of making this video. So I'm just going to get the zip uh, archive of all the source code for this version of I am GUI. Once I've got that, if I open that, you'll see we have I am GUI 1.6. Now there are a few things here that we care about. We don't care about all of this. Like we don't really need all of the examples. You can see there's everything here from Apple to DirectX, a bunch of DirectX versions, old school kind of OpenGL, more modern OpenGL, Vulkan and SDL, and there's a lot of different things. We don't care about a lot of these. What we do care about is the OpenGL 3 example, because that one happens to be using GLFW, which is what we're using. And that's gonna just make it really, really easy for us to integrate it quickly. And the other thing we care about is, of course, the actual IAM GUI. So from IAM GUI, what we actually need um, is all of this stuff, basically. So if I copy all of these kind of CPP and header files that we have here, like that, so that's all of them. If I copy them, I'm gonna go ahead and open my vendor folder. And then from here, I'm just gonna make a folder called IAM GUI, and then just paste in all of my code into there. So the other thing that I wanted was that uh, GLFW example. So if I go back to, uh, to this zip file and into examples and uh, where is GL3? So open GL3. I'm just gonna grab uh, these two. Now we don't really need main. I'll copy it out anyway. Uh, we don't want it or anything, but it is a good kind of example that we can just use. Um, so if I go back here, I'll paste all this stuff in. Main, again, we're gonna delete and we probably just won't include in our project, but it's still useful to have there for reference. Okay, cool. So that's all we need for IMGUI. It's really, really easy to set up. If we go back to vendor, I'm just gonna hit this refresh button up here at the top and I'm going to basically include everything from here. I'm just gonna exclude that one main.cpp file because we do not want that, so exclude from project. But again, we'll keep it around here for reference. Okay, so to set this up, um, if we take a look at this uh, GLFW example here, um, one thing that it does is it actually uses GL3W instead of glue. Um, we're just gonna change that, so we'll get rid of this comment um, and we'll change this to be GLEW, and I guess I'll change this comment here as well. That's pretty much it. If I hit Control F7, this should just compile, and you can see it does. So let's try compiling the whole project now that we've included all of these IAM GUI files. Hopefully everything works fine. And as you can see, there we go, no errors. 
let me just drag this output window over here. No errors, everything is fine, beautiful. So now we just need to integrate it into our application. So to do that, a really easy way to do that is just to take a look at this main.cpp file that we excluded, because that basically has an example. So really all we need to do here is we need to create the context for IMGUI. We need to call this glfw3 init. That function is found inside this GL, GL, uh, glfw3 example that they have here. Um, and you can see it registers all of these kind of key bindings. It takes care of that for, uh, for us. You can see that all we have to do is pass in the window pointer into a knit and it will just set up all of the input bindings. So it's really, really cool. Um, style colors dark, sure, why not? Um, and then it's got some examples on actual usages. As for our run loop, we just need to start a new frame. And at the end, we just need to basically end the frame uh, using I'm going render and then uh, render draw data for glw3. And that's pretty much it for all of the draw data so that it actually renders it using OpenGL. And at the end, we can do shutdown. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So if I just dock this side by side, let's go ahead and start copying some of this code. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Hopefully you guys can still see everything. Um, this will just be for a bit while I copy this stuff. But basically, um, let's grab that uh, create context that we have here um, and we'll put it at the top. Uh, so right before we do our loop here, Maybe after we create the render essay, I'll call I am GUI create context. Now we need to include this because it's in our vendor folder. We should just be able to do include I am GUI slash I am GUI dot H. And we'll also have to include that glw3 example. So this one here, great. Okay, so we create the context. Um, we're then going to initialize this. So we'll just pass that in. You can see, I mean, it even, it's even called the same. It's even called window in both examples. So we really, literally don't have to change anything. Um, we'll go ahead and set up that style and set it to dark. And that's it for the initialization. Um, let's go ahead and start a new frame. Now this doesn't have to be, if this has nothing to do with starting a new frame in terms of like a new GLW frame, it's just for I'm GUI. So we can just put this here. It doesn't matter. I'll put it after the renderer clear. You can put it anywhere. Just make sure you put it like in between your, your I'm GUI code. So before you start any I'm GUI code for this frame, you want to have the new frame uh, function call. And then at the end, there's I'm GUI render and then that kind of draw data, render draw data thing. So I'll do that right before we swap the buffers. And then finally we have a shutdown. So um, there's two lines for that and that's right before GLFW terminate. So we'll put it right there. That is it. Okay, so now let's try and render a window. Um, this main example also has that, which is beautiful. You can see there's a bit of a window over here. Let's copy that. I'll put it after, uh, I might put it after we render everything. So maybe right over here. Um, and then there are a few uh, variables at the top here that we want to also copy. Um, let's just put that here. And uh, let's close main. I'll put the, the text size back up. Let's hit F5 and see what we get. Okay, so check that out, that was really easy. And you can see now what we have is this window that we can kind of move around um, and everything's uh, everything's pretty beautiful there. So we can change the color. Um, I can even click over here and adjust the color of everything. Now you'll notice that it is a bit offset from my mouse pointer. <laughs> That's actually this laptop. For some reason, Windows DPI scaling or something I don't know exactly what's going on, but the mouse pointer is just offset for a lot of applications. If I even open something like Mischief Up, which is a paint drawing app, you can see that it draws way offset from my cursor when I'm at the top of the screen. And then if I kind of go down, it kind of matches. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but if anyone knows what on earth is going on here, it's been really frustrating. It's just this laptop. It's not the only kind of high resolution 4K, whatever laptop I've got either. So I'm not sure why, but it's just this one that seems to be completely wrong. So don't worry about if, if you're like your I'm GUI should be completely fine. Um, but you can see that, uh, yeah, it's even got like color pickers and this is just an example of kind of what you have here and then all of these settings and like, yeah, we can drag this around. We can resize this window however we like. I just need to find my mouse pointer. This is so annoying. There we go. Um, so yeah, that's I'm GUI. This is a great example of how it works. Now let's actually do something useful with it in our code. So I'll get rid of all these all this kind of example stuff that we have here. Um, 
this whole example window we don't need. One thing I will keep is this, I guess this slider float because that'll be useful. Um, and I'll get rid of everything. And I guess we'll keep this frame rate thing because it's kind of useful. Okay, so now one thing I want to do here is we've just talked about model matrices and how we can use them to translate our actual geometry. Let's go ahead and make this kind of model matrix something that we can actually edit live. So to do that, I'm going to copy uh, basically these two lines um, and paste them over here where we actually do our uniform submission. So we need the model matrix um, and then we need the MVP. And then what I'll do with that is um, I'll just get rid of the model matrix from here and the MVP from here. I'll cut this uh, MVP line, this actually uniform setting, and I will put it uh, over here with the other uniforms. So now we're basically just recalculating the model matrix and the MVP every frame, which is totally fine. So now let's add something to IAM GUI that lets us actually kind of modify this. So right now it's just a GLM VEC3, and that's something that's, that we're passing into this uh, translate GLM function. I'll cut that and I'll, pu I'll put that outside of our run loop. So maybe over here, and I'll call this translation. We'll still start it at 200, 200 and zero. And if I go back here, I'll paste in translation. Um, and then into IAM GUI, I'll use something called a slider float three. We'll probably just use a float two because uh, we just care about X and Y, but we'll use a slider float three. And I'll pass in the memory address of translation X. Now I'm not really sure this takes a, you can see this takes a float array. Um, I'm not really sure how to get that out of GLM though. Uh, if we look at VEC, if we look at what a VEC three is, um, that's for low P, okay, high P VEC three uh, is just a type def of VEC three. Um, you can see that uh, the thing that it's using is just a union of uh, T, X, Y, Z. T is float, so we have X, Y, Z. It's pretty much how you would expect a, a, a vector tree to be laid out. The reason it's a union is, of course, just so that we can basically address it by either X, Y, Z or RGB or STP, whatever kind of variable names we want to use. Um, and they, of course, mean the same thing. Uh, but I can't really see anything, I was looking through this a bit earlier, that returns an actual array, like a pointer to... Um, everything. You can see this just returns T. Um, so I'm not exactly sure, maybe there is a way, but right now I'm just going to pass in the memory address of the first variable, which is X or R, whatever you want to use. I'll just use X, of course. Um, and that's just going to give it the memory address of X. And then of course the next one in memory is going to be Y and Z. So everything will work as expected because the memory layout is the same as a float array. Okay. So anyway, the, the bounds that we'll set are maybe, um, 0 and 960, 960 because we have our projection matrix, I believe, set to be up to 960. Um, and that's really all we have to do. Um, I mean, of course, where this is this is basically setting up a three component slider that we can use to modify this translation vector, which is being passed into model and being used for our MVP matrix, which we pass into our shader. So everything is kind of linking up. If we hit F, if we hit F5 to run our code here, you can see what we get is uh, this, and if I move this window out to the side a little bit, what I can do is change the this uh, value here. This is the X position, this is the Y position, and you can see that it moves everything, right? And if I put everything to zero, zero, you can see it's not really quite the, the bottom here, and that would be because I think in our vertex buffer, um, yeah, you can see we don't actually hit the bottom anywhere. We're kind of at 100 by 200, so that is why that's not in the very kind of bottom left. But anyway, um, yeah, that's a great example of why I'm going is really useful. It just lets us quickly bring up stuff like this that we can control um, while, while our actual code is running so we don't have to keep recompiling. And it's really going to help me to show some of these things that we cover in this series uh, in a bit more detail. Now, unfortunately, I hate this mouse offset thing. Maybe I can actually think about solving that for next time. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit the like button. You can also help support the series by going to patreon.com forward slash the churno. Uh, as always, I, every, the code for every video goes up on GitHub, and if you're a patron, you can access that. So be sure to take a look at this code if you want to make sure you didn't make any errors or anything like that. Um, it was really, really simple to integrate IAM GUI. I mean, you saw how easy it was, really no big deal. Uh, if I was kind of writing my own engine, I probably may have rewritten their kind of GLFW thing to also include other APIs like DirectX or whatever I supported. So. Um, this series is obviously just about OpenGL. I just thought I'd throw IAM GUI in because it's going to help me explain a lot of OpenGL concepts a lot easier because I can kind of manipulate things live. But anyway, next time, uh, what are we going to move on to next time? Uh, there's so much to cover. You'll have to just wait until next time and see what ends up happening. I'll see you then. Goodbye.